Hello, welcome to the single African market program dedicated to bringing you every activity around the vision of the continent of Africa to integrate its market. Now, last week, we brought you a very historical event uh, that took place here in Accra, the commercial capital of Africa, regarding the commercial launching of the Pan-African Payment and Settlement Systems. And if you recall, uh, some time back, we spoke with the Chief Executive Officer of the Pan-African Payment and Settlement Systems, all the way from Cairo. Uh, the Chief Executive mentioned quite a number of benefits for these uh, PAPs, but he also mentioned the fact that the pilot of the uh, PAPs has taken place in the six WAMZI countries, that uh, includes Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, the Gambia, uh, Guinea, and the rest. But now that we have the commercial launching of the PAPS, what does that mean for the AFCFTA? What does it mean for the continent of Africa? How does that help all of us take advantage of the AFCFTA? This week, we're going to sit down with the Chief Executive Officer of the Pan African Payment and Settlement Systems to get deeper understanding of what all these means and how does it propel the vision of the continent of Africa uh, to integrate its market. We've commercially launched PAPS. What does that mean? It means uh, that PAPS doors are open and that we're ready to actually scale the solution beyond just the West Africa monetary zone where we've uh, done a pilot but beyond uh, to the length, length and breadth of uh, Africa. We are now opening our doors and we're inviting all the central banks across Africa to come and connect and participate in this platform that we believe will transform trade on the continent. As you know, individuals, businesses and governments, they consume goods and services. And trade, you know, the exchange of value is the means by which those goods and services are consumed. So the more we make payment efficient, the more we accelerate trade. So the launch was to tell the whole world that PAPS is live and that they can indeed connect onto the platform. By so doing, we're able to extend the service down to the small traders in the remote areas, to the small business people, to, to the individuals who need to send money across borders. Is there any country that, or are there countries that are already connecting, that at the moment, if I live in any of those countries, I can begin to transact with my counterpart in other countries. Do we have countries that are fully connecting? Even though you had a, a pilot with the Wamsi countries, would you say that the Wamsi countries are already full swing that anybody within these countries can begin to trade under, uh, under PAPS? Okay, so that's an excellent question. Um, it's, we are building a financial market infrastructure and it's a central bank centric uh, system. So first of all, the, the first journey is connecting the central banks and then we connect commercial banks and then we connect payment service providers, okay? We've connected central banks and we've done live transactions and we'll continue to do live transactions between the central banks of the WAMSI region Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, okay? Um, now we're extending PAPS to all the other commercial banks, and that is going on quite well. So to answer your question, uh, you can actually um, begin to transact across multiple channels in this quarter. Okay. In this quarter, I mean from now till the end of March, or from now till March? It, it, can, it will actually begin this January, uh, but uh, tra life transactions are going between the central banks as we okay. speak. Okay, so if I understand you clearly, at this point is at the central bank's level. The commercial banks are not connected yet. So we are in projects with uh, several commercial banks. Uh, Actually, uh, if I have to let the cat out of the bag, yes. uh, we already have uh, successful transactions between commercial banks. Okay. Um, and, uh, in these WAMSI countries? In or? these WAMSI countries. Okay. So uh, we're actually planning with them uh, and agreeing the day that they will formally um, uh, launch the services as banks because each 
each entity that goes live and begins to do live transactions will communicate this to its own customers. So we're already seeing live transactions between commercial banks as well. Beyond the Wamsi countries, are we seeing any progress? Yes, we're making progress. Uh, we are engaging the rest of Africa in multiple fr on multiple fronts. So we're engaging them as individual countries and we're engaging them as regional economic blocks, okay? And we know that there are certain uh, key critical payment infrastructure that exist on the continent. We, for example, signed uh, an MOU with BUNA. BUNA is a cross-border system in West Africa, in Northern Africa, that connects the Northern African countries to the rest of the Arab world. So we've signed, that project is commencing immediately, okay? We've also signed with uh, Comesa, uh, the Comesa Clearing House, who run a payment system that connects the Comesa countries, which is mostly Southern African, East African, and a bit of Northern African countries, okay? Now, beyond the regional blocks that we are trying to uh, engage, we also have individual countries who are also connecting to the PAPS platform, and we'll be announcing a few new countries in the coming weeks. And uh, would you say that the enthusiasm is there? Are people embracing this? Well, um, I'll, I'll say this to you. Um, we are actually working on scaling up our team to be able to support the amount of uh, the demand? demands that I we're see. having. And we're getting better at the way we manage these integrations. So, uh, okay, in the past, we could take uh, three months or, or six months to do an integration. Now we're doing it in under a month. Okay, so we're getting more efficient. But beyond that, if we have to connect the whole of Africa and to do it in a short time, we have to now build that capacity to run multiple projects, okay, and in a shorter space of time. So um, to answer your question more directly, the enthusiasm has been very, very good. We've enjoyed a lot of support from the central banks, you know, and the, generally the African people. I asked that also because we see a lot of uh, other payment systems that are at the local level, payment infrastructure systems that are being organized at the local level. There are also perceptions that quite a lot of Africans are not playing at the bank's level. Some are doing small uh, you know, electronic payment systems here and there, the mobile money systems is coming and all of that. Besides the commercial banks, are you connecting with other infrastructure systems within, within nations Again, or any plans uh, to do uh, that? That's a, that's a brilliant question. Um, the way to look at PAPS, you can look at PAPS from the point of view of a superhighway connecting countries, okay? And then you can look at the players that connect on PAPS as cars that drive on those roads, okay? And those uh, cars that drive could be commercial banks, central banks and they could also be payment service providers so ultimately we would like uh, all these players to be able to ride on this one uh, super highway and deliver service so if those entities are the cars on the highway then their passengers are actually those consumers the man on the street the small SMEs uh, you know who are selling leather products okay the aim is that we will have uh, a system that supports even a small fintech tucked away yeah. in a small country like Seychelles with okay. just a total population of, I'm not sure, about, about half a million people who can now begin to see the whole 1.2, 1.3 billion Africans as his market rather than just being constrained within that small island nation of Seychelles. Do you understand? Yeah, I, I do. So we are flexible, we can connect to regional systems, we can connect to national systems, we can connect to commercial banks, we can connect to fintechs and payment service providers. And you would have to do that directly with them or they, they have to link through 
you know, a, a smaller step before they get to your level. They can deal with PAPS directly. So, yes, we can connect directly with uh, each of these entities. However, from a settlement point of view, they would require a direct settlement agent to be able to settle uh, those transactions. Okay, they will require a direct participant. So, to give an example, I'm a small mo uh, money transfer service operator. Yeah, I want to connect to PAPS. Yeah, I'm going to have a settlement agreement with a direct participant who is maybe a bank. But as a money transfer operator, I am connected directly to PAPS. Do you understand? However, I handle my settlement through that direct participant. So we connect to everybody, but not everybody is well positioned to handle settlements, and in which case they will require a bank to be able to support their settlements. Okay. You have successfully been able to do this through extreme hard work from your end, your deputies, the entire team that you have at PAPS. Uh, at this point, what physical benefit is the continent supposed to hear or see from PAPS getting into tomorrow, for instance, getting into uh, the next week, the next month? Do you have timelines? Uh, particularly when we are all hoping that we we'll start or commence trading under AFCFTA this year. I think uh, the Vice President of Ghana put it very well when he talked about this being the single most transformative uh, 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 initiative on the continent for, for decades, okay? Now, the tangible benefits you begin to see. Today, if I, had, if I want to send money from Lagos to Accra, first of all, I have to start worrying about oh, how to source dollars and all that and all that. Then after worrying about that, I make the payment and it takes three to seven days to arrive. Okay, and uh, so all those, and then we we'll do that at a very expensive cost because there's a whole network of corresponding banking relationships that exist in between the person sending and the person receiving the payer. And, uh, what PAPS is doing immediately is that that transaction is able to complete within seconds. And what does that do for the merchant or for whoever uh, is doing the transaction? Instead of spending three to five days waiting for his payments to clear, which is time that he would have used to continue his selling and to continue to expand his business, yeah, he's able to confirm that payment in about seven seconds. Well, we've committed to 120 seconds in the market. However, the exper the, our experience since we went live, those transactions have been going at an average of seven seconds. So that's one. Secondly, he's able to initiate that transaction in his local currency. So he goes to his bank, his bank debits his account in Nigerian Naira, yeah, and the money arrives in Ghana, in Ghanaian cities. Okay, so that again removes that burden of sourcing uh, FX from commercial actors. Do you understand who should just be focusing on growing their businesses? Then, again, the cost of actually doing those transactions, we are trying to also see how we can reduce it. Now, if you look at the cost of a good, do you understand? They, are, they build in the cost of uh, their, their funds. Yeah, again, if your funds are tied down for a number of days, there's an implication. Do you understand? Then you add the cost of the co corresponding banking relationships that factors into it. Yeah? you add even the alternative cost of businesses that may have been lost in those periods. So you now add issues to do with FX and so on and so forth. So it's a whole lot of costs, yeah, that is not previously captured, but perhaps will eliminate those costs. So what you'll find is that, you know, doing business on the continent will become much easier, much more pain-free, yeah, and it will deliver tangible value to the average man on the streets. Would that affect, uh, or would, it, would the exchange rates be affected in any way? It, 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 it is the fact that I'm using PAPS to engage 
mean that exchange rates between the countries would, would be affected in any way? Does it also have the tendency of reducing high rates uh, among member countries, for instance? So when you look at exchange rates of a country, there are a number of different things that factor into it. Uh, the PAPS model is a very central bank-centric model. We went on this journey with the central banks from day one. You know, they were involved in designing the bylaws and the rules. They were involved in, uh, you know, agreeing how participants would join and what the roles of each party would be. Okay, so the central banks have been there from the beginning. Now, on the issue of exchange rates, that is actually one of the tasks that we have uh, uh, that the central banks now fulfill okay. uh, in the PAPS world. So every day, each central bank is able to actually define the exchange rate of its own currency on our platform. Every day? Well, as frequently, Regularly. as frequently as they want. Okay. If, if they feel it should change every day. Isn't, isn't there a way to regulate that? that? Because people have also, and businesses, traders have complained, if you take Ghana, for instance, almost every Tuesday, every week, uh, virtually, you have the current the, the rates, and this time in dollars, changing. So if somebody needs to clear goods at the port on Monday, and you are not able to clear the goods from the port on Monday, by Tuesday, you go and meet a different <laughs> amount on your du or duty on your, on your item. Is there a way that, per your engagement with the central banks, there can be some sort of ceiling or some capping or some regulations of the rates? Well, um, again, I know that the, the Ghanaian res regulators, and certainly from my experience, are probably one of the most uh, responsible regulators on the continent Okay, and uh, I cannot uh, begin to pontificate on, uh, on any decisions that they have made. So, and I know that the interest of the Ghanaian people is very paramount for yeah. the regulator. And to that extent, everything to do with um, exchange rates, we trust that uh, the regulators in Ghana will do the best for, uh, for the Ghanaian people. So, okay. we just... It's just you count one on of, the, one, one on of the regulators to deal with it. Leave in the hands of the regulators. Okay. We are coming to the uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, we speak to the Secretary General and or speak to the Secretariat, and we are hearing that we've been able to negotiate 87.6% rules of percent of the rules of origin. And the Secretariat is hoping that the continent will trade under this 87.6% regulation. This is one year after the formal implementation began, that's 1st January 2021. What's your assessment of the EFCFTA thus far? His Excellency uh, Ambassador uh, Juan Kelemene has been phenomenal. Uh, he's shown so much courage and strength and capacity. Um, what, uh, what the AFCFTA has been able to achieve in this short time is actually phenomenal when you compare it with some of the other trade agreements that had uh, been done, okay? I think that they've done very well and that they're on course to actually get us to that Africa that we want as contained in, uh, in the, vision, the AU vision 2063. I think that I think that they are very much on course, and uh, perhaps will certainly play a significant role in actually bringing out those volumes, those trade volumes that we would like to see. But uh, uh, the ratifications have happened quite quickly. It's a very ambitious project, and I think that uh, the continent has selected the best man to to lead that effort. What would you expect going into the future? from the Secretariat and from the EFCFTA? Well, um, I think that there will be more countries ratifying because as the benefits begin to materialize, um, a, lot more, a lot more countries would, uh, would ratify and actually begin to trade, okay? I'm hoping also that, um, you know, that some of the phase two negotiations 
would now be, start getting completed and that the benefits will begin to accrue to the countries. I'm hoping that when we look in real terms at the volumes of trade happening between the different countries, that they would actually uh, will see significant growth in those areas. And um, I, I really haven't worked with uh, Ambassador Wankele Mene and his uh, team from a PAPS point of view. You know, their energy, their vision, you know, the drive. You know, I have no doubt that uh, they will deliver this continent on sound grounds. Okay. Uh, what would you also expect from the citizens of the continent, businesses, street communities of the continent, as far as helping to propel this AFCFT agenda is concerned? Now that we have PAPS and we have AFCFT, the extent that it's going and which you acknowledge, what, what's your expectation of the people on the continent, businesses in particular, who are supposed to benefit from this or all the activities that you and your colleagues are putting together? I, I would say this is a call uh, to us all as Africans to really begin to get involved. So from the government and policy makers, you know, understanding all the provisions that are available within the AFCFTA, and beginning to domesticate and say to themselves, this is what it means for each of the sectors. This is how it helps to unlock uh, these value chains. All that uh, are things that need to be driven at, at national levels. Now, for the businesses and uh, for uh, the SMEs, you know, they also need to be aware of what the AFCFTA is about. And of course, at this point, I trail back to the media the media has a lot of work to do. I would like to see the media taking this whole AFCFTA and demystifying it for even the average man on the streets, okay? So that people become much more aware. If you look at Africa, a population of 1.3 billion people, yeah? What these borders that separate us have done is actually now to put us, lock us in some artificial borders and actually make us not to be able to do business with each other. Okay? Now, with AFCFTA, looking at the free movement of goods, services, people, okay, looking at intellectual property rights and so on and so forth, is expected that it will now begin to facilitate the free flow. Okay? Now, I think that if all of us as Africans begin to believe in this one vision, you would see that the sum of the small, small units would never be as much as what we can achieve, all of us working together towards a single vision. So that's, that's, the, that's what I would like to see going into the future. So PAPS is officially launched commercially across the entire continent of Africa. Already pilot has taken place in the six Wamsi countries. And we are told that upon the commercial launching, uh, the entire system is open uh, to the entire continent of Africa. It will be up to you, as I have always been telling you, uh, to follow some of these events, some of these uh, systems that are coming up to uh, help this whole vision of the continent of Africa to integrate its market so that you can be able to take full advantage of the AFC, FT, and be able to uh, be impacted by it positively. Uh, that is what we continue to urge all of you to do. And indeed, some of you have been sending questions, queries, uh, to know a lot more about the AFC, FT on our various uh, platforms. And we have also been sending them to the right and relevant authorities. For instance, the National Coordination Office of the EFCFTA is right here at the Secretariat. Uh, their office is here, and we've been urging all of you to, if you have questions, if you want to know more, please come to their office and understand uh, what is going on. Dr. Farida Athar is in charge of that. In the meantime, uh, he has dedicated an officer to respond to some of the uh, issues that you have been bringing to us. Next week, we will be sharing all of that with you and uh, the rest of the world as well on this particular platform. If you have any issues, questions you have around this whole vision, please share them with us. We will endeavor to contact the relevant authorities and bring you the relevant responses that you need to know. <music>
In news and events around the continent of Africa, the FCFTA Secretary General sends his deepest condolences to the people of Ghana. A release by the Secretariat reads, The AFCFTA Secretary General, His Excellency Wam Kilimene, has learned with great sadness about the loss of lives and the destruction which occurred on Thursday in a devastating explosion in Apiati town after a vehicle transporting explosives collided with a motorcycle. The Secretary General sends his heartfelt condolences to the families of those who lost their loved ones and to the government of the Republic of Ghana. Quote, as fellow Africans, we share the pain felt by the people of Ghana as a result of this tragic accident. We send our thoughts and prayers to the families of the bereaved. Unquote. Signed, AFCFTA Secretary General, His Excellency Wam Kelemene. Also coming up in this week, the West African Association for Cross-Border Trade in Agroforestry, Pastoral and Fisheries Products and Food will be opening a Trade Information and Border Assistance Desk, TIBAD, at the Ghana-Togo border on the 28th of January, 2022. So this week, we're going to place our lenses, our focus on a young lady who is innovating and creating a lot of excellent stuff out of trash. What you and I ordinarily will call trash, she's making excellent use of them, uh, creating wall decos out of them and doing a lot of beautiful stuff. You need to see this. She calls her company Trashy Beauties. <music> This is the place we use your trash to make beautiful artifacts. This is sachet rubber bag that I've used to produce very nice flowers, as you can see, with corn husks. I want to take all my products you see around me here to the rest of the African countries. I'm a Chinese translator. I develop interest by making all these beautiful artifacts that you see around me here just to promote our sanitation and also keep our environment clean and also make beautiful product out of nature and also to create jobs for our uh, youth. This product is made up of poly bag that after your shopping, you just dump there somewhere and then I'll take it and fold it and mold these beautiful flowers you can see. We have this empty champagne bottles and then touch it with a very beautiful fabric, just rope. This is a wedding bouquet that uh, I've made with poly bags, white poly bag, yellow poly bag, and then green poly bag. If you come here, it's another wedding bouquet that the name is Waterfall. It's made up of old newspapers, cardboard, and foam sheets. This is a dressing mirror made up of cardboard, old newspapers. The design you see here are old newspapers. And this is an evidence that's a cardboard that we've used for a dressing mirror. Always when I'm doing my product, I leave evidence so that you will not doubt much. So this is a cardboard that you see with old newspapers and then white stones. It's a flower vase that you can use in your home. And then this one you see is a car tie, coffee table or a center table made up of old newspapers, the weaving old newspapers. This is a very beautiful relaxer chair made up of cardboard, no wood. The cardboard you threw away after buying your fridge, your television, is a plastic bottle flower that you see here. We use Belacqua, Awake, Specialized. And then the vase you see is cardboard that we've used as a flower vase for this beautiful plastic bottle flowers you see here. This is old car ties that you throw away, then Trashy Beauties will pick it and make a very nice center table or coffee table for you. The inside that you see is uh, old newspapers arrangement just for you to keep things inside if you prefer that. I have a very nice seashells flower vase. You can put it on your dining table or anywhere you prefer. And um, you know, seashells can not be placed on our tables to stand like this. So I got that idea to use cardboard and then juice rope to make it a very beautiful artifact. This is made up of seashells with balloon, old newspapers, and cardboard. And we have the old newspapers here in a very nice design as a flower vase that you can use in your home. The table you see here 
It's made up of cardboard, no wood, with broken mirror. We have another center table here, made up of cardboard, no wood. This uh, V8 in my hand here is made up of old newspapers. And you can see the old newspapers here. And then under it is um, old cardboard. Don't trash anything thinking it's rubbish. But with trashy beauties, trash is our treasure. This is specialized bottle covers and then Vena. And this one you see here is Belacqua. I decided to just leave the side so that you will trust or you believe that this is bottle covers that you can use in your home. This beautiful flowers you see here is made up of plastic bottles. The vase that you see here is made up of old newspapers and cardboard. You will see very nice, beautiful flowers here. It's made up of jeans. Your old jeans that you throw away, it becomes old that you don't like. Don't throw it away. Bring it to Trashy Beauties. You will make a very nice, beautiful flowers out of your fabrics for you. See the black uh, sticks you see is not sticks. It's old newspapers that we used. And then the design you see around it is cotton ear bag. When your ears are itching you, the cotton ear bag you use to make your ears so nice and feel good. You see very nice wall decor here with different colors. It's made up of old cardboard and then sticks from cardboard. We have another wall decor made up of fabrics. Your dress, if you don't like, you just bring it to us. Instead of throwing it away, bring it and we will use it for a very nice decor for you to use in your homes. This nice uh, mirror you see here is made up of wooden pegs. If you wash your things, then you dry them on the dry line. The pegs you use to hold your dress, that we have used them to produce a very nice mirror for your homes. If you come here, it's a fabric with cardboard. Uh, this seamstress, after sewing our dresses for us, either they burn the pieces or they throw them away. Trashy beauties, nothing go waste in our hands. We just pick them and then create something out of it. I have a very nice um, wall hanging um, holders made up of old newspapers. And this one too is another wall decor made up of glue sticks and cardboard. This sticks you see here or the strip you see here is not sticks. It's made up of old newspapers and then cardboard. I call this mirror sunrise. It's made up of cardboard. And see this nice flower vase. It's not sticks. Old newspapers. This one, you can decide to put flowers inside or you leave it like that on your dining table or your center table. The whole thing you see there is made up of cardboard. But this one you see here, that makes the cardboard look beautiful. It's made up of old jeans. It's fabric. When the seamstress, they sew our dresses and they throw the pieces away, I'll just go there, pick them, and then sort them out, and then do something beautiful out of it. So this flowers you see is not any other flower, but it's a fabric that we've used. And the sticks you see in there is no wood, old newspapers. This one you see beautiful here. You can see it's a mirror, yes. But the decoration you see around is made up of old newspapers. This is the mother of trashy beauties. I started with this. Made up of the tea roll cardboard we find in our homes and then old newspapers and cardboard. This is toilet the, the toilet throw, the paper we find in our toilet throw, the design Kelvin that you see are uh, toilet throw, and, and then, then old newspapers. Oh, I roll them and then I arrange them. You can see all the writings that we find in newspapers, pure old newspapers. These are very nice leaves you see around here in our showroom. It's not natural leaves, but it's plastic bottles that after consuming our water from the bottle, that we throw our bottles away, then Trashy Beauties will pick them and then produce or make something beautiful out of that empty bottle you throw away. There's another nice wall clock that you find there with uh, bottle covers, Belacqua, with straw. The name is the Yasantua Pierce. And then if you come here to another wall decor, very beautiful with broken mirrors and cardboard, 
that we used to produce that. And then jeans, old jeans with cardboard wall decor. If you come down here to, it's another cardboard with old newspapers. Green pepper, there's a silver pepper. Yes, it's made up of um, Coke bottle, the bays, two bays that we joined together. And this is cardboard, no wood. And then the basket you see inside as a fruit basket is made up of old newspapers. And then the stand you find under there is Belacqua bottle cover. So that when water fall maybe on your table, it will not touch it, but it will just pass under and go. So they are durable products. And then the table you see nicely here is made up of old newspapers and then old cut, cut tie. That's been. It can be in your bedroom, your hall, your kitchen, just to promote sanitation. This is cardboard and old newspapers. Old newspapers are unique. This is a flower vase you can use in your home, hotels, guest house, anywhere. This is a car tie sales counter. So old car ties, old newspapers, cardboard inside so that you can place your items in a very unique form. On top of the car tie counter, you can see nice vases with their flowers. This vase you see here is made up of cardboard with foam sheets. This is jeans, your jeans. This one to plastic bottles. Now that we have after in Africa, which we can sell our product in the other African countries without paying duties, I want to sell my products in the other African countries. With AFTA, everything is possible. AFTA, thank you. <music>we are always excited to feature the likes of Rebecca on this platform and that's because they are creating stuff they are getting involved in small and medium enterprises and we believe in the fact that the future of African business lies in the hands of the likes of Rebecca those who are involved in small and medium enterprises and that's what we've quite often heard from the Secretary General of the EFCFTA Secretariat uh, touting that quite often and not just him alone His Excellency the former President of Nigeria uh, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo for instance made that clear in the last week's edition of the Single African Market Program and quite a number of people have s made that significant uh, call that let's continue to encourage small and medium enterprises because they own the future of African business. You can always share your stories with us and if we scrutinize them and find them uh, editorially fit for our platform, we will definitely share your story with the rest of the world. Coming up next, the weather report for all African cities, the forex rate for the African market, the flight schedules leaving the commercial capital of Africa, that's Accra, Ghana, to the rest of the African cities, as well as the AFC FDA party status. <laughs>
So we are always happy to bring you the relevant information from the uh, relevant authorities who are always willing to uh, bring you information about this vision of the continent of Africa to integrate its market. That's why we encourage you to tag along this platform so that you are not left behind because the continent is moving now. Last week I told you we've launched PAPS. We've launched the 2023 edition of the IATF and all of that. Things are moving. The continent is coming together, nations are coming together, and you cannot be left behind. So we encourage you, tag along this platform. And if you have questions, you want to know a lot more, you uh, want to understand it deeper, we encourage you to visit the AFCFTA Secretariat, the Africa Trade House, and visit the National Coordination Office headed by Dr. Farid Arthur. Uh, he always says that he operates uh, an open door policy. And indeed, he's one person that as soon as you call him, he picks up, uh, always engaging with the people who really want to understand what the AFCFT about, is about. Unless you understand it, you can't take advantage of it. So please make all the efforts to understand it. Thank you for watching the program and I hope to see you same time next week.